All right, so let's go ahead and start the process here. This was very inexpensive. I want to say like 60 cents, 70 cents. I've already drilled some holes. This is a standard 40 half inch PVC pipe cap. Again, half inch. It's going to be solid on this side right here. Half inch threading and it's a standard 40. I picked this up at Home Depot once again for about 60 cents ballpark. I've already drilled two 3 16 inch holes in there with the drill bit right there. I just use a regular power drill. I got a couple little burrs I do need to clean up right inside right there. I will link this aquarium hose in the description box as well because what I like about this, this got fantastic reviews on Amazon for obviously fish tanks, but what's nice about it, it's not crazy hard plastic. This is kind of a soft, not quite, I'm not gonna say like surgeon tubing soft, but like maybe halfway in the middle, maybe less than half, I'm not really sure, but it got fantastic reviews on Amazon. I'll link it in the top, link in the description box below. And then I got myself a Husky half inch NPT by one fourth NPT reducer. Again, this is in the compressor section of Home Depot, half inch. That cost about six bucks, five, six bucks ballpark. Okay, so that's what this looks like here. That might already have some threading on there, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick a little bit more. Just your Teflon tape right here. We're gonna put it around all male sections. So I'm gonna put it around where my thumb is right here. This goes in the cap here, screws into place once my aquarium tube is through. Now I use again a 3 16 inch drill bit and I've cut my tubing at slight angle and it slips through really nice and tight. So there will be no or very little if any air escaping through the holes there. So I use the same holes drilled through right here. And this was just a test piece to make sure I got the proper drill bit size. Most aquarium tubing is gonna be the similar size. So 3 16 inch drill bit should work just fine. So a little bit sharper of the edge, the better, and you can always clean that up to a more either flat if you want, or a little bit of an angle. But right as this top portion is through, Needle nose pliers do come in handy to be able to pull it through. Now, once it's pulled through this distance, just pulling it through with your fingers will do a sufficient job. So, as we can see, nice and tight there. Now, I've marked off my halfway point. I've cut this line to 29 inches, and that's going to give me 14 and a half inches on each side once pulled through. I might lose a quarter of an inch because of the cap, but let's just call it 14 and a half. So, again, mark your center line so you know how far to pull it in, but before we pull it all the way in, we need a little bit of a spacer. All right, now I've pulled my center line down, and I'm almost done here, as you can see my little mark, my little blue mark there at the very top. Now, as you can see there, there's a hole there. I took my snippers, and I cut just the top off, as you can see there. Don't go through the bottom section, just the top layer off, so that air can move through those two hoses and out the bottom here. Now pulling it down, if you do get twisted on the top, just twist one of these down here and that will straighten it out right here. Now we're not done quite yet. We took some shims, pieces of plastic, anything. I just took the thin portion of a shim and it's so thin, I just use regular kind of like utility scissors and I've cut down about four thin pieces of shims, very thin. You don't wanna block the threading too much but this obviously won't screw in too far. So we're gonna go ahead and insert our shims in the center, making sure they fit obviously in a half inch. And then we're gonna pull this down evenly right on top of those shims, just like this here. Again, with the center line right over that. And as you can see, my left hole and my right hole being able to distribute it down the row here. Now these once again, after measuring it from the top portion right here to the very end is actually 14 inches a piece. I forgot I lost about a half inch going underneath as well. So cut it to 29 and a half if you want it 14 and a half and 14 will work just fine. But if your duck is about 14 and a half inches across, that will give you a half of a half of an inch in each direction. I'm not too concerned about it, but if you want to be precise, go 29 and a half would give you 14 and a half inches long for each whip. Now, again, my angles are still angled. Everything is looking good. Now let's put Teflon tape around this. Screw that into this. That's not screwed in all the way, but I wanna show you. I wrapped it around about three times all the way down. Teflon tape will make your connection airtight. Now I'm gonna go ahead and 
hand thread that in as much as I can. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it like this down here. I'm gonna get a wrench and I'm gonna tighten that down, but not too tight. Don't over tighten it where you're gonna crack the PVC cap. So I have my air compressor hose right here and excuse the mess, we're in a full remodel right now. Now, as you can see here, I actually need to remove a little bit more of the old Teflon tape on this one. All your male connectors, go ahead and wrap around with more Teflon tape. If it doesn't have it already or if it was old, remove the old one and put on some fresh one. That's gonna keep your connections nice and air sealed. So this is gonna thread into my quarter inch reducer here. Again, half inch was on top, quarter inch on the bottom. This is a quarter inch threaded. And that is what the whip is gonna look like connected to your hose right there. So again, we are looking absolutely stunningly beautiful here. Now let's go ahead and connect it and give it a whip. Now, when you're having your opening holes, making sure that there is enough opening for the air to get through. My first go around, I actually had to widen the opening of these holes here. I was getting some leakage out the top of my cap, so I messed around with some JB Weld. This is super tight through here. I shouldn't be getting that kind of air loss. So I enlarged my holes so the air can flow through those holes better instead of escaping through the very small, small, I mean, if anything, holes. If it stalls out against the corner, sometimes you'll get one whip going and the other one's not going, but I've had great results with this method, okay? You can do a DIY homemade vacuum, a little bit more beefier like the pros do it. Shop vac is working great for me. So I got my shop vac, I got my hose, I got my hose in the vent, and what I do is I just turn that right there and kind of hold that in place. And so it's right there, so if I'm bringing it back, if I'm pushing it towards it, it's being able to suck it up. All the other vents in the house, except for the two that I'm working with, are exposed. There's a vent under there that's covered. There's a vent under there that's covered. So on, so forth, and obviously make sure your HVAC system is off before you even get started. So I turn on the shop vac. Don't start your air compressor hose and whip on the ground here. Made that mistake one time. And of course, again, like I said, I'm in the middle of a full remodel. Drywall dust went everywhere, and I had to wave it back into this room. I've been using a 3M 2097 mask, definitely over the top, but I'm protecting my lungs. So what I've been doing is I did about, about three or four passes by shot back here. I push it up. That's the way I'm gonna go towards that end of the house. This will be the clean section now. So I push it all the way that way. I pull it all the way that way. I push all the way that way, pull all the way that way. You could do it a couple times. Put your cell phone in there with the video on and light on, see what it's looking like. And then I flipped the shop back over on that side and did the same thing, push and pull. Checked it with my cell phone video, looks great. And if you do have any debris sitting right around the bottom, then obviously without your whip whipping, shop back it up and move on to the next section. I will also have my full cleaning video linked in the description box below the video. Definitely give that a watch. I go into more tips and tricks, especially cleaning around your furnace, your air intake, your blower motor, etc. And if you are having compression issues with a compressor and holding 100 PSI, etc., I was having the same issue and I was able to clean it with a lower PSI as it kind of starts really strong, like 120 PSI and then drops down to like 60 to 80. So watch that full video. This method definitely worked. I was able to save a bunch of money, but ultimately if you don't have a compressor already, if you don't have access to a hose and all this, you might just want to pay somebody to come in and do it. They only come in every three to four years, something like that. I just felt like doing it myself and building one. Also, another tip for you, if you're getting bad whippage, you might want to slowly start cutting off the length of each whip about an inch at a time to see if that whips around a little bit better. And for myself, it again was whipping really nicely as it's on a really high PSI and as it lowered down, it would whip slower, still work, but that's why I use the pushing method and the sweeping back method, sucking up into the shop vac and doing that, you know, three or four times down the row, putting my cell phone camera below, checking it out. Watch that video, it did a great job overall. Took several hours to do the whole house, 
but was well worth it. And really nice to know I'm not breathing in that crap because it was really dirty. You guys have a great day. Look in the description box below once again for those links. Thumbs that video up if you wouldn't mind on your way out. Helps the channel and the YouTube algorithm. Also subscribe if you like videos like this. DIY tech videos, van life builds, and more. We will see you on the next video. Take care for now. Bye-bye. Don't let the party stop, guys. Hit one of these videos, continue to watch, and we'll see you soon. Thank you.